So, so I think, think the first, first and potentially the only four-time U23 uh, national champion. champion. Uh, just a sport. How are you feeling? I feel pretty good, you know, being in this tournament. I felt like I was in decent shape. You know, I was able to get in shape. That's not usually too hard. But, um, you know, I was making all my training autonomous because I had to leave my college where all the rest of us were because of the situation there. It was awful, still is awful. So, you know, I came back. I was training on my own and getting ready for this tournament. Honestly, I'm just thankful that we even have an opportunity to wrestle because I didn't know that, that you know, we would. Yeah. So, so uh, came into the tournament in the fourth season, but a lot of people scratching their heads and thinking, you know, Tim Hammond's going to be there. Burned down and all the rest of the right now. But, but uh, you know, did you, did you care about it? Did you think that that was weird? You know, what, when you looked at the draft, what was going on? Oh, well, honestly, I didn't skip a beat with that. I just, I didn't even, I don't think I even looked at it, actually, because I just knew it wouldn't matter either way. But, uh, yeah, I didn't even know I was the fourth seed. Home <laughs> tournament, I never even looked at it. But, you know, I, I knew that they would probably see me like that just because of my last performance. And, obviously, I never really talked about it, but I knew that I was sick, not feeling good at the last tournament. And so, you know, that showed in my performance, but I'm not sick anymore this one, so I knew I was going to perform better. Yeah. yeah, so, so you, you see the performances, you know, you know you find you have Chris Earl, the dude that you can wrestle the past two years, years in, in the finals. In the finals, you got uh, Tyler Dow, you know, an age group world team member, and, and you're dominant, dominant, dominant in, in both matches. Can you talk a little bit about how, how you came ready to wrestle yeah. today? Yeah, that's a, you know, that's a great question. See, like, um, I felt like I was training really well at home. It's kind of strange how it works because I felt like I was getting better training at home than I was in Northern. And that, that doesn't really make sense because, you know, I went to Northern to get better partners and better training. But I think that, you know, when I had my support system around me, which is my family, and we were able to kind of cater towards me and say, okay, we need to have this, 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 have your meals planned, want to get you these, these ropes, get everything you need, get it all situated and focus just on one wrestler in the house because I was the only one really competing at the time. And I think that extra focus, that extra just like um, tunnel vision really helped me out, you know, with my training. I felt like I was getting really good with my technique, and I think it definitely showed in this tournament. Do you think uh, during this pandemic, you know, based on what you just said, that you kind of understand what you need and what you need to do going forward a little bit better? Yeah, I think, I think this was definitely – a a growing opportunity for all wrestlers. Um, you know, there's lots of adversity. Every wrestler has faced lots of adversity during these times. And I think that, you know, some are going to say, hey, it's too much. And they are probably already on the, the, the quitting end of it already. They didn't really want to do it anymore. They're not passionate about it. And then there's others that are like, you know what, if I change a couple things here, I can actually, actually I can become stronger because of this. So, you know, and I think um, all the wrestlers, top wrestlers in my weight class, they're going to realize that they're, they're, they're not going to stop training. None of, the, none of the people in my weight class ever stopped training. So, um, you know, I always have competition there. And uh, I think, you know, wrestling's in a very, very hard spot right now with, with, you know, all the programs being cut. And I just wanted to make sure I say this. Like, I really believe that every wrestler with the responsibility of training and being, you know, ready to wrestle at all these tournaments, we also have the responsibility to be advocates for the sport. I think every single wrestler has that responsibility to be an advocate for the sport. But I think not a lot of wrestlers um, recognize that they have that responsibility. And we need to do this as, you know, as wrestlers. And I know it's a burden because not every sport has to do this. You know, your football it has the popularity that it needs. You only need to focus on football. You don't have to focus on being an advocate for football, you know. So that's an extra responsibility. And that's what makes our sport so valuable. So how, you know, how do you fill that role? That's a great question. So there's a lot of creative ways to do it. Um, the way I've been doing it right now is I actually started a meme page. When I started a meme page, you know, at first it was just for fun. And I, I realized, you know, hey, I'm, I'm helping to popularize wrestling with, with doing this. And I think that that's a really good thing. And so I've been continuously trying to grow that page and continue to push wrestling and get younger kids interested in wrestling saying oh you know that's cool you know it's funny i like that you know a lot of people see my page 
I'll put I'll do a little plug here. It's called Elite Wrestling Memes. That's Elite Wrestling W R A S L I N Memes with three Z's. But yeah, um, you should follow there. But like it's it's a great way to be an advocate for the sport, and it's like a silly, fun, and lighthearted way to be an advocate for the sport. So I I find creative ways like that. And then I also, you know, I, I do lives on, with my with my uh, meme page, and I speak about these things I'm speaking about right now to other wrestlers. Get them on the same page. It's like, hey, you got to be an advocate for the sport. This is your responsibility. So. Well, that's awesome. Um, Elite wrestling, wrestling, wrestling memes. memes. You got to make, make sure you check, check it out, out folks. Um, Jesse, congratulations. Four-time four champ. That, that's, you know, you know, really a remarkable feat. Uh, uh, no, no world championships this year. year. But, you know, you can still, still talk about, about what this tournament means to you and what being the first person to achieve that. And, you know, I'm pretty sure I can't be speaking here because I think the tournament's only ran for four years at this point. So, so I, I don't think anyone else had the opportunity to do this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's great, you know, coming back and, and actually getting some matches in. And, you know, it's upsetting that I don't get to go to the World Championships. But I do think that it was the correct decision by the administration to – pull us out of that because it is very dangerous and I think that you know showing caution would be smarter than you know just trying to run into every tournament that you can so you know until this thing until this thing blows over I really think that it's important for us to take caution keep our athletes healthy and keep their families healthy so they all have you know something to fall back on so it's really important awesome well congratulations Jesse uh, hope we see you back on the path in the near future all right thank you very much